Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by. This is Sandy from Color Creatively. And today we're going to be talking about acrylic paint on backgrounds. And we're going to be talking about acrylic washes for your images to make your color book pages go faster and be brighter. And uh, we will be using colored pencils for detailing. But I have a lot to say in this video, and it's going to be as informative and as close, ex inclusive as I can make it. Um, so you might want to watch to the end of it. And um, let's get started, because I have a lot to tell you. I, first of all, will say I'm new to acrylic paint. I've been coloring since 2015 and have really not used it in backgrounds I, um, or images. I have, before that, I was for several years oil painting. So that's my background. Uh, I have been using acrylic paint the last month or two, or actually one month, and um, I've learned a lot, and I want to share that with you. I, I'm answering questions that you, the subscribers, have left me in comments or in emails, and so I hope to cover it all. If there's a question that I haven't answered in this video, please leave it in below in the comment section of this video, and then I will have another time when I answer that question for you. I'm going to be using this lovely book, uh, and I am going to take a picture out of it, which I've done, and I have some cardstock here. This is just cardstock. You can use computer paper, whatever you have handy, because we're going to paint. We're going to do in the background um, a solid color, and then we are going to do a wash over these um, images, and then we're going to detail them with colored pencil. Now, let me tell you, when you do a background and you want to have a uh, something on top of it like for example if you were to paint this black and you wanted to draw a star or a planet or a or a fog a mist i would use the um white colored pencils that's sorry that's my pencil a prismacolor which is the best white pencil i found and then you would be able to do that because you would be using a matte it says here on the label, a matte finish. It's not shiny. It's not glossy. Now, if you want to do a background like I'm going to do, which I want it really shiny, and I don't plan on doing any colored pencil on top of it, I might use a gel pen on top of it if I want to use my stencil to make a design. Uh, but other than that, um, I am going to have a shiny background. Then I want to take my acrylic paint, my matte finish. Matte's the only one that once it's dry, you can take colored pencil and write on. Uh, the metallic, the extra sheen, the enamel, the satin finish, all of those, you cannot do that. Well, you could, but it's very difficult and it doesn't look good. So stick with the matte paint. However, I have a lot of, of the uh, metallics because I love a metallic background. So, on my image though, when I go to dilute this, I will talk about that in a minute, I want a matte finish also so that I can go over this and detail it with pencil. Now, I want to show you a metallic background that I've done recently. And that is in this book here, Fairy Miracles by Clara Markova. I used a um, gold color. It looks brownish, goldish color here. And as you look at the light, it turns really gold. So that's an example of one metallic background. Uh, this is another one. It is a uh, color shift paint by Folk Art in the background here. So you can use it uh, many ways. Okay, uh, let me show you a matte finish background so you'll see the difference in the paint. This is matte. There's no glistening this background. It's just, and it gives me full coverage. 
which I really love because I'm using it straight. Now, we don't want to dilute our paints any more. Whoops, I just <laughs> dropped something. Sorry about that. We don't want to dilute our pants, paints any more than we have to. Uh, and especially on the background, we want to use it straight. Now, there are times when this paint will come to you a little thick, and it's going to be too hard to spread. So then I would put it on a palette. Now, I've got this lid from a potato salad. It's a great rubber and so and I have this one from a peanut can these if you have any lids in your kitchen from containers packaging use them I use these as a palette to put my paint on put my water and different things in here so I'm using that I'm recycling I'm also using this uh, empty jam jar that I bought strawberry jam in and in this jar, I have the water very low because I put my brush in water and I do not want the water up here past this ferrule. This is a ferrule because the water will go in here and this whole end, the glue will eventually come off. So I will always keep my brush in water just up to the bristles. Now, when washing your brush, I need a container. I have another jam jar with a lot more water in it because I am going to swish my brush around. I'm going to wipe off excess paint on a paper towel first. Wipe off your excess paint and then swish here to get it really clean. And then put it into the other jar of water until you're ready to use your brush again. At the end of the day, what you need to do is to take all your brushes and to the sink and use soap and water on the bristles. That way your brushes will, won't get hard and they will last longer. Okay, as far as brushes go, we're going to need brushes. I have a, an assortment here. And you can buy, these are just craft brushes you can buy in a package. I've got these white ones were in one package, and they are angled. Um, they are at an angle, so I can use the tip to drag. I can use the side just to smooth. I can use the back for pointing or the front. So these are handy. Also, they come with all sizes in the pack. They're craft brushes. You can get them at your local craft store, or I will list these below because I believe I bought all these on Amazon. And then there's these really fine brushes here. I have a whole, these come in a set of different sizes. This is size number one. It starts at zero and goes up. And these are great if you have a drawing where there's a lot of detail and you want to paint around the background around it. These are excellent. Then I have a set, this is not the largest brush in the set, but this is a larger brush. It's large enough for me to do the background here and go over the edge. And I'll show you how we do that in a minute and why. And then I have round brushes. Um, this was a free one. This one I bought in a set. Uh, some of these are free brushes that I got. Anyway, um, this is a round brush, and it's also good for going around. And they come in different sizes in this pack. So there's a smaller one if you want to go around detail also. I have a variety of brushes because depending on the drawing, I will change brushes. What else do we need? We need paint. And um, like I said, I'm using craft paint. You can use the paint in tubes or little bottles like this, any kind of craft paint. And I have a little spray bottle for water that I'm going to use. So when I put a dab of, I don't want to put a whole bunch of paint here because acrylic paint dries out real quick. I use tiny bit at a time. I might spray it if I want to dilute it with water a little bit and then use the end of my paintbrush to mix that up. Don't use your brush to mix it up. You get too much paint in the ferrule here or in the bristles that go into the ferrule. So you don't want to do that. Anyway, I just want to give some real basic things before we start. Okay, like I said, let me repeat this. If you want a background, 
let's say you want to paint black and you want to put in some stars with your colored pencil, your white pencil, then you must use matte finish. Do not use metallic or any other finish. When you want to do a wash on your images, it must be a matte finish, not any other finish. That way you can use your colored pencils on top. But for today's demonstration, I am going to do a metallic background and I'm using Extreme Sheen Metallic Paint by DecoArt. And I will show you a little bit of how I paint this on. And then I am going to uh, not finish the whole thing here, of course. That would be too boring and too long. Um, then I will um, come back uh, and show you or do it in the same video. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. I will show you how to do a wash. Okay. So I'll try to accomplish that in this video along with how to detail and what colors to use. Okay, so let's get started. Now, I'm going to start when you're using a matte finish on your background. You may use one or two coats, sometimes three. It depends on the color, not also the quality of the paint, but more or less the colors, the pigments like red, take more coats. So it just depends on the color because everyone uses the same pigments. Now, some paints are better than others, I agree. But uh, don't be frustrated if you have to use one or two coats. Yes, it takes a little bit of time to go around your image and to paint this on. But believe me, it's a lot shorter time involved and the look is better when you're finished than if you where to use pencil. Pencil takes a very, very, very long time, as you probably know. So let's get going here. And I thought I would do the metallic background for those that want the metallic background. And then um, just know that when you're doing the matte, you're going to paint this straight on and only dilute it a tiny, tiny bit if it doesn't want to spread, depending on how thick your paint is. And the metallic is usually thin enough, but sometimes it isn't either. I'm going to shake it up real good. And I'm going to paint here. Let's see what brush I'm going to. I'm going to use the big brush. And what I suggest is we don't want to get paint on the back. Now, this picture doesn't have another picture here. But if it did, I don't want paint right over here on the other picture. It will you know, damage the picture here. So I want to keep it off the back. So you can either use a piece of computer paper or cardstock like I'm doing. Um, doesn't matter. Whatever's handy for you. And I'm going to put it down there like this. And I'm going to put a little of this um, metallic paint on my uh, palette here. I try to recycle products the best I can, as much as I can. <laughs> okay, and so I don't know if this is too thick or thin, so I'm going to just try this first. And what I want to do is paint all the edges. Now, if this is in a book, you won't paint this edge. But I want to paint all these edges, and I don't want the paint on the back of the picture. So I'm going to hold this down. I don't want a big this to stick up like this. I want to hold it down. And I wet my brush and dabbed it off. My brush is not dripping wet. It's just damp. And then you lift up. Never go this way. Go this way. Okay. Now this is watercolor paper, so I've never worked on it before. And I don't know how it's going to work out. Yep. Okay. So, and then when that's wet, don't move this unless you pick it up and move it to another spot. Okay. I need to have more space there. Okay. So I'm going to paint this all on here. And I'm going to let that dry. I'm, do thin coats. Do not try to glob paint on and make it thick. Now, I'm not coming back this way. I might go this way, 
But again, I'm very mindful of that edge I'm going over. I don't want to get paint on the back of this picture. I lift it up. Okay. You can use a small three by five card and move it if you'd like. And I don't, be careful, this has to be dry before you put your picture next to it again. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do then after I paint the whole thing and um, I will use a smaller brush to paint the background around these flowers. This one's going to be pretty easy. The leaf, the flower has more detail. I don't want to lose the detail, so I will paint around that. Okay, and um, next time you see this picture, I'm hoping to show it at the end of this video um, finished. Um, I'm going to finish it off camera, then uh, come back and put it at the end of my video so you'll, you can see it. Okay, now... That's the background. Whether you're using matte finish or whether you're using metallic, you just want to make sure. And you want to go around all your edges first. All your edges first. Let that dry. And then go back and start filling in around your image here. And um, let me do that with a little brush here. So you can see that. Well, I have to shake it down again. Okay, I got a lot of paint. I'm going to use it. I don't want to waste my paint. Okay, I have a little brush here. And I'm going to put the blob there. And I'm going to go this way to paint around the flower. Let me come in closer. I'm sorry I'm not zoomed in. I forget that. I get busy sometimes and forget that. Okay, whoa, so I'm going to paint around that. I'm going to there, there's a blob of paint here, so I want to spread it there that way. If it doesn't, now this is watercolor paper, so it's not spreading as easy as my cardstock or my other paper and my coloring book. Well, it's going to take a little bit longer to do, but that's okay. Yes, it takes a while to do the background, but it is so well worth it once you have the background in. It's so well worth it. I can't tell you. You still spend far less time than if you were to use pencil to do this whole thing. And the acrylic doesn't buckle paper when it's used straight. Okay. So, we're just going to paint that in like that around the image. And like I said, I probably will have to do two coats here. Okay. Let's see where we can go now. We've got, let's just pretend we have the whole background painted. You can see that it still needs another coat. Although the watercolor paper doesn't do too bad at all. And metallic paint will always look a little streaky, always, because of the metal, the metal flakes in it, uh, where flat paint or matte paint will look flat and even. Okay? So, um, now, we want to do an acrylic wash for these images. And I want to have pink here. What I would suggest when you're doing a wash Use the lightest color that you want to use in this image to show through. We're not covering up all the paint that we put on. We're only going to detail shadows and highlights. That's all we're going to do. We're letting that base color show through. So I have limited pink colors, but I'm going to be using baby pink. Now, if you have a dark pink and then you want to make it lighter, a lot of people mix in white paint. Well, all I can tell you is that um, it will dry duller. Oh, shoot, I have myself in paint here. I put myself in my palette. Sorry about that, my elbow. Oh, my brand new blouse. Okay, 
anyway, um, if you mix in, if you say you had a dark pink and you mix in white, and when that dries, it's going to be duller than if I just use this straight. So, and if you paint this white first and let it dry and then come over it with this, it's going to only show this color. So, what I do for thinning my paint, um, well, first of all, let me talk about the color. I get a light color paint. Um, I don't try to use white to change the color. I know a lot of people do, but I personally don't because I feel that it makes my color more dull. And I am all about keeping it vivid. Okay, so I have a light color pink that I want. I'm going to use a lime green here. Now, I use lime green a lot on leaves. Why? Because I want that to be my lightest color. Now, these are tropical leaves, and they're probably dark. But by the time we detail this with our pencil, this will look like a tropical leaf. So, bear with me. Use a lighter color than what you intend the leaf to be or the flower to be, because our pencils will change that. Okay, now to thinning the paint. We want to thin this. You can put it on your palette here and, and spray it with water and thin it. But don't stir it with the end of your brush. You'll wreck the bristles, get paint stuck up in here. This it, It'll just destroy your brushes over time. Use the back part of your brush, stir it up, wipe it off, and then you have your paint mixed up. Okay, so you can use water and uh, limit your water. When you use water, you want to use only enough to, to you want to see through it so that your image shows. If you use it straight, it's going to cover up your image. So you want to water it down a little bit. Now, for those that don't want to water it down because your paper maybe can't take it as much, I use this a lot. It's floating medium. And I can put a drop of that into a drop of my paint and stir it up. And this will keep it wetter longer on my palette and help me blend it quicker. It will thin it too. And this one is extender. This will also do the same thing. Only this doesn't help you blend it as much. So those are just, you don't have to have that as a beginner. Right now, let's just start with uh, water. Okay, I'm going to take the paint off of here, off of my palette. And uh, let's see the pink one first, okay? I want to shake it up really good. I'm going to put it here a little bit. I'm going to use my water, two little squirts. I'm going to use the end of my brush to stir it with, to make sure it's stirred up. I know a lot of people will spray on the side and then drag the paint into it. I don't like that because I wind up with not having it all thinned down like I want for the wash. I'm going to put a little bit more. I just sprayed closer to it. And now I'm going to test it to see how opaque it is or not. So I wiped off my brush with a baby wipe. I have another piece of paper to test it. Okay, and what I can do is draw a line there so I can see if it's going to let my, my, my yes, I can see my uh, line through. We'll see. Anyway, I'm, I've diluted the pink down now. I'm going to move that. Any little thing that touches my uh, connection here causes me problems. And I'm going to paint it over. This is my wash. Now, light colors like this already have white in them, so you don't want to add any more white. But if, I, if it's too thick, if I can't let's see, see the color book lines, I will add a little more water, but I don't want it to cover them up. And I don't want to do too many coats. I want to just do one coat on there. Now there's flowers here that are going to be a different color. 
and there's some green leaves so I don't want to get those pink. I don't know folks, every time I make a video, I don't care how hard I try, I have some kind of technical problem in it or glitch or something. So please bear with me. I'm not a pro at this by any means, and every day I learn something new about videos and YouTube and all of that. I never knew how to even use a camera to take a photograph till I started YouTube, so I've learned a lot from scratch. Okay. I just want to go. See, I got way too much paint now. So you can use a tiny bit of paint and don't waste it because uh, when you dilute it, it's going to make a lot. Let's see. That's the that the leaf or, or the part of the, yeah, that's part of the flower here. Got to look at it. I'm not sure what the drawing shows. Okay. Now, this is a wet medium. If you don't want your paper to buckle, then wet mediums are not for you. However, let me tell you, by the time I get this uh, page done, and if I were to work on the page on the back, or even this page, to get my detail in with the colored pencils, it takes away that buckling pretty quickly. And uh, it's very hard to notice. Okay. So, that is my base color for that flower. And now I'm going to do a base color for this. This is going to be a different green than this. This is going to be two-tone green. This will be one color. And um, this is more going to be on the darker olive side, and this is more on the green. But I'm using the same base coat. Remember, on base coat, you want your lightest color first, and that'll show through because we're not going to cover up all of our paint. We're going to detail it with pencil, but we're not going to cover it up. Okay, I'm going to put some of this here, and I, I don't want to get it on my but I'm going to put the water on the side. Um, okay, I've got water. Water went down there. Too bad. That's not thin enough. I'm going to spray it again and mix it up. Okay, let me see on this sheet of paper here how thin or thick this is, how opaque it is. There you go, you can see my line through it. So, it just takes a second to do that. Actually, we're using this pretty much like a watercolor, you know? Uh, actually, I think for the bigger leaf, I'm going to make it a little bit, uh, thin it a little bit more, actually, now that I see. It depends on your paper, too. And this is watercolor paper from this particular coloring book, so it's going to be different. Let me test it again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's much better. Needed a little more water on this paper because this paper eats up the water. It's watercolor paper. It soaks it up. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I'm not off camera there. Okay. Any questions or comments you have, please leave them below. I hope I'm answering everybody's 
questions that sent me a question. I got quite a few. And uh, I'm no expert at acrylic. I'm new at it and I'm learning. And uh, I hope you learn with me. That would be great. We'll learn together. Okay. Now I'm going to <clears throat> just do this whole leaf because I know it's going to be light green and dark green here by the pattern and it doesn't, I want my colors. And you can color with colored pencil over this mat, so that's what's so beautiful about it. Yeah, really, this watercolor paper really soaks up the water, so I will, if you have a different paper, it's going to be a little different. Okay. You know what? I need the bigger brush. What am I doing with that brush? There we go. Oh, yes, the size of brush matters. <laughs> there we go. Now it's, I got to make up some more. I'd rather make up small amounts than to waste all my acrylic paint because, like I told you, it dries very quickly on your palette. And um, that's why you use the extender or the flow medium. But today we're going to use the water for demonstration purposes and for beginners. And I'm mixing it up right now. I sprayed it with some water. I don't want that spray on my color book page. And I have to test it over here on my other sheet. Yeah. Okay. I could use a little more water. I can tell by the way it, it acts and the, the, the sheerness of it that I'm looking for. Yeah, that's better. So this is going to be a little darker, and that was okay that I got the paint a little darker there. Now, don't worry if this is not going to look uh, perfectly, you know, it's going to be light and dark spaces because we're using it like a watercolor. Now, I want to go around that that, um, what do you call it, flower, petal. Now, if you get too much, just dab it like that. I want to go around the flower petal. Okay, so my small brush came in handy. Now, this is green too, so it doesn't really matter there if I get it up next to each other. Okay, so you get the idea, and I can still see my leaf pattern through this. This is what they call an acrylic wash. If you were doing this in Kirby Rosanna's book or Johanna Basford or some other books with nice paper like that, it would be a lot quicker because it wouldn't be soaking it up like mine is here. The beautiful thing about acrylic is it does not bleed through the other side of your page, but test everything before you do it. Okay, I'll finish the rest off, off camera, and then I'll come back when it's dry and show you uh, how to do the detailing, okay? So, let me recap real quickly. Let me back out. I used uh, an extra sheen metallic paint here on the background, which is going to make that look really pretty when, it, when they're detailed. I'm going to have a darker pink in here. I'm going to have a darker greens, different shades of greens here. And the flowers will be different. So um, 
hang in there. And then I will just keep painting until I finish this. I showed you how to keep it from getting the paint on the back um, and how to go around detail. And then make your wash and uh, dilute your paint with water and do your images. Okay, I will come back after I finish this and we will then work on the detailing. So, any questions and comments? Again, I know I've said this in this video several times, but I want to say it again. Please leave them below in the comment section. Okay, I'll be back. Hang in there. Okay, I'm back now, and I have painted the background with our metallic uh, from DecoArt, and I did an acrylic wash on the leaf and on the flower, and now I've started to detail it. So this part of the video is to show you how to finish it up by detailing. So let me zoom in for you and uh, get a little closer so we can see how I'm coloring this. Okay. Um, I, my base coat here is light pink. I have uh, three colors here that I pulled out. And I'm using uh, Color Premium pencils. These are in the green can. I don't know if the red or black ones are the same. I have no idea, but the green can, the premium, uh, I'm going to use pink 022, pastel pink 003, and magenta 1016. I'm sorry, I could have to hardly see that. So I'm going to use that. And on the leaves, I am going to be using Forest Green 135, Bean Green 129, and Olive Green 140. So I started to do a little bit here to see how it's going to come out. Now this flower has already been shaded with ink. So I not have to do too much other than take my magenta color, which is the darkest one, and color that in. If it weren't shaded with ink, I might have to, um, and I'm going to color that part so that that magenta shows through. So it matches these up here. Okay. Just to get it going here. Now there looks like a green leaf sprouting there, and over here it looks like a little lighter. So I am going to go with this um, pastel pink, and I'm going to go in there and just color that one in. These are small areas, so I didn't need to do an acrylic wash. Now, when you color here, you can do two things. You can use a Prismacolor colorless blender, or you can use solvent, which I have done on the leaf. And when I do the leaf and the flower, I'll sh well, I didn't do it on the flower, but I did it on the leaf. So I will show you how I do that when we get there. Okay, now um, I just used... Uh, bean green, and let me, oh, I thought it was sharpened. Let me sharpen it. I need a point on it. And I'm using my trusty Dow, Dahl, D-A-H-L, 133 sharpener. Oh, this thing sharpens all kinds of pencils. Soft lead, hard lead, everything. Okay, um, I'm going to just color in the leaf that's sprouting here that's so small I don't need to worry too much about shading anything just coloring it in and it matches these uh, there are lines on the leaf if you want to make them different colors the lines go ahead but I am just going to color the leaf in okay just like I did the flower 
And let me come in a little closer. Maybe that isn't close enough for you. I hope I can stay on camera. There we go. And uh, I'm just going to color this in here too. There's a little bit of a leaf sticking out there. And I'm just doing that. And here um, I can take my colorless blender. This is watercolor paper, so it um, has more tooth than the paper you're in your coloring book. So uh, you'll have you have to compensate for that. Okay. So there are those portions of this flower. And if you look at my background, yeah, it looks a little bit like watercolor. Uh, it's blue there, a light blue topaz color. And then as you turn it down, it turns to blue and silver. So this is really neat paint by Deco Art. Now, for the flower, I want to use my lightest color. I'm going. This is our light color showing through. I'm going to leave it on the edges here. Although I might go over it with my lightest pink just slightly um, uh, just to give it a little bit more pinky color you don't have to do that you can let your base coat show through if you want it's all in the look you want and um, okay I'm going to use well let me do this one Let me do a few here so you'll see how I'm going to finish this off. Some of the places the paint was lighter than others, so that's why I'm doing this. But you don't have to because in the end there is a difference here, um, a contrast between them. Use your colorless blender to blend that out. Get all the white spots out. This is watercolor paper, so there are white spots. And if you're using regular paper of any kind, you'll have a tooth to it. So it will have um, spots that needs to be blended. So blend however you're used to blending or try my method. Now, I'm going to take the second color that I pulled, the pastel pink. And I'm going to go just on these uh, lines here that are on the bottom of the flower. Those are little uh, tiny segments on the petals, and I feel that they need to be darker. So I'm making them darker with this color. And I'm just coloring them in. Okay, here we go up here on this one, and then down here. I will do this many le uh, petals, I'm sorry, petals for you, and then I'll finish the rest and come back at the end to show you this completed picture. Okay, let's, well, let me turn my fan on. I have an overhead fan, and... I'm sorry, but I had it off when I was painting with acrylic because it dries it out too fast. And I need it. It's warm in here today. Okay, so then I want to take my darkest color, which is magenta, and go over that again. I'm going to blend it, mix them together. I'm blending them together. So there's three colors, three different colors on this uh, on these petals, I should say. Okay, let's just do a little more blending here. I love blending, and that's why I use solvent. Uh, it gives your work a painterly look. And when the pigment in the pencil is dissolved and you can move it around with your tortillion or paper stump, it gives more... Um, vividness to any pencil. If it's a cheap pencil, it'll make it look 
so vivid if it's a you know very expensive pencil it'll make it look vivid so you win both ways okay so that's how i'm going to do the petals on this flower now let me go to the leaf and um, i want to maintain a lot of the green that we painted on there for oh i first let's do this i want this stock uh to look darker than the leaf behind it so it stands out plus this is a different or I don't know if it's a different plant but it's a flower from this plant so this is probably going to be darker the way the shape of this looks it looks like it might be a darker green so um, I'm going to take bean green and all I did was go just outline it go down on the sides here across the top and I will use my solvent on this because I want it to have a painterly look and really blend it out. I don't want any straight, these are straight lines. Those will not be there. They will be dark, but they will be blended in. And then there's some lines here. So I'm just going to pick and choose randomly the lines that I want to go over. Okay, I'm not coloring in all of it. And then... Um, I use Mona Lisa odorless turpentine. You can use any solvent you want. I pour it into this little vitamin bottle that's glass. And I love the tortillions or paper stumps. And I can move around the pigment. If you use a brush, even if you dab off your brush, you get this too wet. This is not wet. I need to say that for the new people. I've heard people complain it's too wet. And... Um, if you drop any on here, spill any, don't touch it. That will evaporate. If you touch it, you're going to wreck your picture. So, and uh, that will dry. And that's all I'm going to do here. And um, believe me, this makes a big difference uh, in your picture. So, let's see now. I'm going to use the bean green. I'll show you how I did it again. I'm just going around the edges. I want these segments to show because they are obviously different segments here. And I'm letting my base coat show through. I can put less on here if I want this time to make that a little lighter like this one. And I dipped in my solvent. I want to just do little circles around the edge so that's not a straight line. But I want that edge of that leaf darker. And this is watercolor paper so I can see the tooth of the paper, feel it, and see the white spots developing. So I'm going to rub them out. Okay. So that's how I'm going to be doing this. This stem here, I just colored it in straight. And... I used the bean green on this, and then I used a little white pencil to tone it down. You can see that here on the stem. I need to go over this again and make it just a little bit darker with the bean green. The edges of that stem I want to be dark against the background of the light. Um, Oh, there's just a little bit of the, um, right there, of the metallic paint that was on the stem. So I want to cover it up. And I'll just put a little bit darkness here and leave it light otherwise. So that's all I'm doing. Here, uh, there's just some dark lines. You might want to put those in. That's it. Just blend it out. If you use other methods of blending, go ahead and do that. I'm showing in my method, and I use a lot because it works so great. Okay, on the leaf, I want to leave a lot of the uh, lime green showing, but yet I have this olive green. This is a different green. Um, I think different parts of the plant should look different. And this is on top of this. So we want contrast, the difference between light and dark. So I'm going to use my olive green pencil. Let me sharpen it. Sorry about that. I thought I had these sharpened before I started. 
but I haven't. And I'm going to let the lime grain show there, here. Uh, every other one I'm going to put in the um, olive green. There, there's lines here for segments that the artist drew. And these are straight lines. I'm just going to go around the edge of it. Up here near the stem is darker. Near the circle is darker. And a little lighter there. And then I'm going to take my solvent and blend it in again. And that's how I'm going to finish out this entire leaf. Now, I did go a little darker with the bean green around the edge here, because I want that to look brighter. Here, I, I got a little bit too much um, blending, but that's okay. A leaf is not perfect in nature. Let's do another segment. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to outline this because I want the green in the middle to show. And I'm going to skip some of that so that we have some of the um, lime green showing. I'm going to go around this. And then I'm going to just go on the line. I don't want to color this whole leaf in. I do want the base here more solid because near the stem, oh, I used the wrong color. I used bean green. I didn't use my olive green. Oh, shoot. Okay. Let me erase that. That's another thing you can do on top of acrylic is you can erase. And let me put the right color in because I don't want to change my leaf or have that spot looking different. Okay, that's just, uh, I use a Dollar Tree makeup brush to brush off the crumbs from my eraser. Okay, let's use the olive green. And then I want to just go over the lines. Go over the lines. And that's it for that. This section here, I'm going to leave light. This one, I'll color dark and go around this, outline this a little bit, just a little bit in certain places. Now, I'm going to use my trusty solvent and blend with my torch. See how it blends? It takes the straight line, it diffuses, and you can move around the pigment when it melts the binders. And then it gives it a more natural look that's why I love to use the solvent for blending. And I'm just going to go a little bit with my residual solvent over that because um, I'm not doing anything else to it other than maybe taking the olive green and outlining it again. I just, I just want to accent these spots. That's all I'm doing. And here too. Now here... I'm going to just do the line and the line here and the base of it. And I'm going to bring this dark line this way. Okay, let me get some more solvent on my tortillion. I will list all these in things I'm using below in case you're interested to try these products out. Now, this is watercolor paper, so it's going to have to dry. Uh, cardstock would have been uh, not given us this look at this point. Okay, I'm going to just see where I need to go lightly over that line again. I want it, the color smeared around it, blended out. But then I want to enhance the line for contrast. That's what I'm doing there. Okay, 
So I'm going to back out now so we can take a look at some of the detailing that we've done. Okay, that's how it's starting to look in the background with that light blue topaz. And I'll be back when I have this finished and I will show you the final uh, product at the end of this video. I'll show you what it looks like. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Well, here we have our leaf. We've got our background in, our metallic extreme sheen, light sky blue topaz. So I have a piece of dirt there. And we've uh, detailed our leaf and our flower. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And uh, I'll answer them the best I can. And then until the next time we meet, happy coloring.